it's a mistake to say that I'll have a few words because uh, <laughs> the older I get, <clears throat> the more long-winded I get. I'm speaking today for myself and for Jay Van Andel, who is a co-honorary chairman who couldn't be with us today. <clears throat> so I hope I do him justice. When I speak for my wife, I get in trouble, deep trouble. <clears throat> Matter of fact, that happened a few months ago. Uh, just over 41 years ago, we moved to Grand Rapids in 1952. My mother and dad were alive and well then, and uh, things change, people move away, people die. And, uh, but my dad, when he went back for the Greenville Hospital dedication, was real pleased to be part of that, and yet right after it was completed, we moved from Greenville to Grand Rapids. So we leave legacies from where we are for the future people, and uh, I guess that's one of our joys of, uh, of, of growing up in a community. Uh, Lena and I uh, live in the city of Grand Rapids. We only have one house. I haven't offered to build her a new one. I can't now. I haven't paid for all the sculptures yet. I, matter of fact, I bought a lot of them on cash flow time. I figured out how to pay for them, but uh, uh, without interest, because uh, over a period of time. But we don't have cottages, and we don't have boats, and we don't have those things, and I'm not crying poor mouth. It's just that uh, we don't want them. So uh, we think this is kind of fun. I've been a part, and our family's been a part of a lot of things that have happened in Grand Rapids when it comes to clearing the 40 acres where, where the banks are setting and the fry buildings and so forth and, uh, and the new, uh, all those things. Uh, I happen to be chairman at the time. Uh, we've had a little part and a big part in a lot of things that happened around Grand Rapids, all the way from the early days of the Schubert Club to the Ford Museum, the Public Museum, and so forth. Well. Even though I've had a part in all those things, I think all those things would have happened if I hadn't have come along. Uh, of course, it took a lot of people having a part or nothing would happen, but there's a lot of people in this wonderful western Michigan area that make things happen. And so I thought to myself after we took a trip on the Baltic and uh, with, uh, with uh, Frankfurter and we were in Haifa with the Royces and so forth where we saw sculptures, and I fell in love with sculptures and uh, bronzes because they last forever. You can bury a bronze in the dirt for a thousand years, dig it up, sandblast it, repatina it, and it's like new if nothing other uh, uh, worked on it badly. And uh, there's just something eternal about sculptures. And uh, we knew Marshall Fredericks from uh, Detroit area, and uh, we just uh, liked his work. I think he's probably the foremost sculptor, sculptor that Michigan has ever produced, and I set out to gather uh, uh, the largest grouping of his that I could. He was about 77 years old, he's now 85, and when you go from 77 to 85, you get a little older and a little weaker, and uh, so we really, uh, we have the last grouping that we purchased coming next Friday. Uh, I wondered where to put them. After I decided that I wanted bronze sculptures and American sculpture, uh, we looked uh, Lena first didn't like a pig we saw in, in, uh, in uh, Florence. And uh, then later on she saw where the kids were rubbing its nose near the Ponte Vecchio on, over the Arno li River in Florence. And she fell in love with the pig that she hated in the, in, uh, when it was for sale, but where it wasn't for sale, she fell in love with it. Uh, I don't know if there's a parallel with that in my relationship with her all these years, but uh, we won't go into that too deeply. I'm just getting in more trouble. I wanted to put them downtown in the core city, uh, and I talked to Don Lovers about putting it on the Grand Valley downtown campus, and I talked to Steel Taylor about putting them around the museum, and I was just buying sculptures, and I wanted a home for them that would do them justice. But we just couldn't make it work. We even considered John Ball Park, and later on John Ball Park for the, uh, for the that would add room for the sculptures, but not for the botanical garden because of the facilities there that would have to be closed up. So none of these things worked. So I had to satisfy myself with getting involved with the, the sculpture of the Berlin Wall, if you call it a sculpture, and the Indian, and a few things like that. And uh, when I was talking to Jay Van Andel, he says, well, what, what do you have for the public museum? So we're going to have a set of swans along the river there between Pearl Street and, uh, and the Museum of Marshall Frederick Swans. And we'll have a set of those swans in the park, and that's the same set of swans that's outside the Kellogg Foundation in Battle Creek. 
So the, the history, I won't give you the whole history, that'll take too long of why we landed here, but Betsy or somebody, no, I, I don't think it was Betsy at the time, uh, and I saw him yesterday and I can't think of his name now, and that's awful, but a gentleman came to us, would we give him Leonard in Plymouth? Well, we didn't want to part with Leonard in Plymouth because we wanted to build a store there. So then uh, the Botanic Garden went on its own way. We didn't give him Leonard or Plymouth or sell it to him at a low price. And later on I found out, uh, to my dismay almost, that what they really wanted was this property, which was owned by the UAW. Well, uh, the UAW turned them down just like we turned them down at Leonard and Plymouth. Well, by the time I got to negotiating with Betsy, by the way, uh, keep your false teeth in your pocket if you negotiate with Betsy. But uh, uh, she said, well, you like Leonard and Plymouth because it's close to the exit of Leonard Street and close to the, you can get there from the Plainfield exit and from the East Beltline exit. Yep. Okay. I tell you, then uh, all those attributes, uh, well, she says, where would you like it the most? That area? Yep. Okay. Well, then you got what we want. We want the back end of your property at, uh, between Bradford and Leonard. Oh, my God. We didn't have any intention of giving that away. And so we did some fancy talking amongst ourselves, and we said, we'll give it away, no strings attached. That's for uh, Marsha Baukamp with the Grand Rapids Township. I've told her that, too, uh, to whatever we do with the property behind us. I guess it's behind us. But uh, uh, anyway, we decided to, to give it, and uh, then she said, well, if you're going to make it work, we, we'd like your sculptures there or something. Or I said, I'd put my sculptures here. And then we want some money besides. And when she got done with me, I didn't only had my real teeth or false teeth. I mean, uh, uh, I was in debt. And but it's gonna, you know, we're just giving birth to it. And I'd hope it just goes on and on and on, getting bigger and better. And uh, we have to go a long ways before we match John's comparison with the or or uh, somebody's comparison with yours, Tom's comparison with the Shaw Gardens in uh, in Missouri. But. Uh, uh, Maybe we'll get there. Maybe not in our lifetime, but probably in some of the children's lifetime here. Can you hear okay? These are a little high for... Okay? Well, I'm the last thing between you and that tent and box lunch. And so I'll be very brief, and uh, I think everyone is covered today, although we'll never adequately cover and thank all of the people that have been involved in this. I'd like on my own, since I've been in this position for so many years, I would like just to add or reiterate a few things that I have. I want to thank township officials, educators, lawyers, artists, filmmakers, students, accountants, environmentalists, bankers, working people, retired people, the wide, wide spectrum of people that have put a shoulder in here to make all of this go forward. And we are where we are today for a lot of people that really played key roles who have been mentioned and that I will mention again, and an awful lot of other people who've stepped up to the line. John used the word driving force. I think people that know me <laughs> are using a little different intonation on that word. <laughs> She's a driving force, all right. Uh, but uh, it, it has been the help of all those people and the various roles that they've played. Uh, they've studied, they've advised, they've projected both expenses and revenue, that sort of thing. Uh, they've surveyed, they've labeled, they've written, they've designed, they've computed, and the list goes on and on. We have a small group up here, and I think they're quite near the front, so we'll be able to see them, uh, that haven't really been mentioned yet, and, but in their own way, they're very, very vital. And that's our staff at the office. Um, two of the staff members have been provided by Meyer, and we're very grateful for them. They're very capable, professional people. On a day-to-day -day basis, I just don't know what I would do without them. And then we have one full-time volunteer on our staff. But Tara James, Sherry Seatsma, raise your hands back there. Shelly Olson, Pat Williams, where are you? Pat, right there. And then if she would, I'd like her just to stand up because she has done all that she's done. She came to me a year and a half ago and said, Betsy, we need to 
I'm almost done and then we can go to lunch. Uh, it's very important today to mention the architects and the planning team because uh, they're the folks that are, they have been site and it's President Earl. And it is so many of the folks at Meyer, uh, Deb Calkin helping us with personnel and Bill Maston helping with the sculptures, the landscape architect at Meyer. Al Kokonowski always coming to the building committees and teaching a few things about how to drive hard bargains when you uh, work on buildings. Uh, we have, uh, tell me the computer, I, Dick, Dick Smedicky, excuse me Dick if you're here. Dick has just done wonders and continues to do wonders with computers. So the company has really, uh, Brian Breslin, I don't want to leave you out because you were the instigator and the messenger uh, that got us to Fred Meyer. So if he wants one more person to blame, he can look for Brian and Brian's not hard to find. Uh, the family, the Meyer family, and, and I mean this is a family endeavor. Of course it was Fred who had the big call and uh, who had the agreement, but it took the backing and the enthusiasm of Lena and the rest of the family to pull this together. I don't know if you fully realize, but Star Meyer is on our board of directors and Star worked very hard on all of the arrangements today as she does on all of our special events. I never am failed to amaze. I've seen it now often enough. I show up and Star has got everything done and she's done it perfectly. So a great debt of gratitude to Star for that. I know that Deb Meyer is a new member of, uh, of the foundation. So the family continues to increase its involvement. And I truly must say that we simply could not have done it and how fortunate what a resource this is. So I will let you get onto the tent and I want to thank everybody again for coming today. My children who came from afar, all three of them made it. No spouses, they had to stay and work. But I have Bill and Susie and Lisa with us today, which is uh, just a wonderful, heartwarming thing for me. And I thank them for this beautiful orchid that I'm wearing. So thank you all and let's go and eat. Oh, I'm...